Welcome to Michael Potts F1, everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. Are you still wondering which Formula One race to attend this year? In this vlog, I would like to explore one of my favourite events on the calendar, the Belgium Grand Prix. If you had to ask every driver who's ever raced in Formula One which was their favourite track to race on, I think the majority of them would say spa francorchamps Nestled in the Ardennes forest, this is an incredible temple of speed. While Monaco has glamour, Japan has amazing fans, spa, spa is where real racing happens. Let me walk you through the history of the track, as well as some practical information about where to stay, what sort of ticket to buy, which grandstands to go, and along the way I'll show you some of my favourite photographs of the race circuit. My first trip to this glorious part of the Ardennes was in 2009, where I came to watch Kimi Raikkonen win Ferrari's only race of that year. Fisichella started on pole position for Force India, which was quite a surprise, and there was a huge first lap incident taking out defending champion Lewis Hamilton. At that first event, I managed to get everything completely wrong. But luckily, since then, I've been to many Formula 1, many World Endurance, many European Le Mans series races at Spa-Francorchamps, and today I'm going to impart all of that knowledge and experience to you. So sit back and enjoy. People have been racing around these hills for, for about a hundred years. The first track was designed in 1920. I say designed, it was more drawn on a piece of paper because the first track used public roads. There was a race planned for 1921, but it was cancelled because only one car entered. The first Grand Prix was held in 1925 and was won by Antonio Ascari, driving an Alfa Romeo. He's the father of legendary racing driver Alberto Ascari, who won this race twice, also driving an Alfa Romeo. From its earliest inception, this was a terrifying track to drive. It was ultra high speed with very narrow roads, very complex technical corners, and an unforgiving forest waiting for any mistake. It was part of the inaugural F1 season in 1950. That race was won by Juan Manuel Fanjo in an Alfa Romeo. The track layout then was very different to what it is now. It was 14 kilometers long and roughly triangular shaped. It only had one slow corner, which is our current turn one, La Source. The track's famous corner sequence of Eau Rouge and Radion is one of the toughest in all of motor racing. A steep rise from a low bridge over the Eau Rouge River and a sharp change of direction to a blind corner of Radion, it's terrifying and exceptionally dangerous. However, the old track had an even scarier corner, the Master Kink, described by Jackie Stewart as the most difficult corner in the world. It was a left-right chicane between two long straights. Here, cars could reach speeds of over 300 kilometers an hour. Drivers would attempt this chicane as fast as they could, or as fast as they dared. It nearly cost Stewart his life in 1966, where he crashed at high speed, ending up upside down in a ditch with broken ribs. After that, a lot of the drivers started boycotting the race. It was getting too dangerous. There were too many fatalities. By 1971, the race had been cancelled. They moved the Belgium Grand Prix to other venues. Formula One didn't return until 1979, but to a considerably changed layout. Something that's much more familiar to us. Down from a gigantuan 14 kilometers to a miserly seven kilometers, they essentially cut the track between Lecom and Blanchemont. The new layout is still phenomenally fast and, and still sadly very dangerous. Horrific recent crashes in the W series uh, with Lando Norris in Formula One and Anton Hubert on the Eau Rouge Radion corner has prompted huge changes in layout to improve safety. 2022 was the first year that Formula One raced with these changes. It seems to have worked on a safety point of view and also hasn't compromised the enjoyment of the race. The reason you want to watch this race live is you get an opportunity to see Formula One cars going flat out down very long straights through the forest, reaching top speeds, as well as having to negotiate very, very tight, very technical corners, bringing out the best in a driver. It also rains a lot in the Ardennes, and, and this gives the drivers yet another challenge. The track is so long that sometimes it can be raining in one part of the track and dry in another. Like Saturday last year, I was photographing down in Eau Rouge, I was bone dry, but I could see on the screens that it was pouring near Blanchemont. We often get a very mixed up grid at the Belgium Grand Prix. This is because the race usually falls halfway in the season, and a lot of teams 
who have maybe used too many power units during the course of the season and elect to take engine penalties at this event. This means a lot of cars often start out of position, like last year where Max started in 14th place and went on to win. There's a lot of overtakes. There were 74 overtakes in last year's race. This does come with a little caveat. Sometimes it rains too much. In 2021, it rained so much that the cars were only able to complete two laps of the course behind a safety car. This was shambolic, and you've really got to think of the poor people who stood in the rain for hours on end only to see cars trundling around for two laps. It did give George Russell his first podium in a Williams, quite impressive, but luckily Formula One have changed the rules, so hopefully we'll never see anything like this ever again. With a track this large, there's obviously a lot of places you can watch the race from. The cheapest ticket for the race weekend is about 230 euros for general admission. And at this track, general admission is probably, probably the best general admission in the entire season. It's a really good option at this track, not just if you're on a budget, because there's generally a lot of very good places to watch the race from. And you can move around, getting different views from each session. I would suggest doing turns 9, 8 and 12 and the Camel Straight for the practice sessions, and then double gush for qualifying and let com for the start of the race, then run over to the bus stop chicane for the end of the race so you can catch the podium celebrations. Grandstand prices range from about 350 to 700 euros, and in terms of grandstands, gold seven and eight are amazing to watch turn one from. You're bound to see a lot of action at the start of the race at La Source. Here tickets will cost between 630 euros and 685 for the weekend. A Rouge is another classic view, here, gold three and four are good options, and they're similarly priced. F1 experiences have tickets starting at 915 euros, which give you a grandstand seat as well as a lot of other additional perks. Things like pit lane walks and other chances to get close to the drivers. They do have some quite interesting, quite unusual options available. The Champions Tower being one of them. The most expensive ticket in town is the Paddock Club, this is around 8,000 euros for a three-day pass per person. Here you can watch the race from above the pits. You have paddock access, pit lane walks, track tours, amazing food and drink, and a host of other really cool perks. In terms of accommodation, there's a whole host of options available, starting with camping. Camping is not for the faint at heart. It does rain a lot, so be sure you're prepared for that. If you want to sleep at all, bring earplugs because the campsites do get very, very festive. If you prefer something with four walls and indoor plumbing, the closest hotel to the track is Hotel de la Source. Unfortunately, it's fully booked for 2023, but if you've got the budget, it's a really good option. Last year, I was having dinner there and bumped into Daniel Ricciardo and Nicholas Latifi, who are both staying at the hotel. Because it's located in the countryside, as you can imagine, there's not many hotel rooms available, and most of those get snapped up very, very quickly. There are a lot of cottages, converted barns, and very cool places to stay in local villages, so have a look on Airbnb for those. The nearest large towns are Verviers and Liège, and there's very good public transport links between those and the racetrack. The organizers put on extra buses. Here you'll find a lot of hotel options available. And there's some brilliant restaurants in Liège. It takes about 30 minutes from Verviers to the track by bus. However, this can increase dramatically when there's bad traffic. One year, I stayed in Brussels and took the train in. The train ride to Verviers is about an hour and a half. And I probably wouldn't recommend this as an option. But in an extreme case, it is doable. Driving is an option. Although the roads do get quite congested around the track, there is a lot of parking but you often have to walk a fairly long distance from the car park to the track. Last year, I stayed in a beautiful apartment in Germany, in Weisheim. It was about an hour's drive to the track. So there are a lot of options available. You just have to hunt around and see what's best for you. This is a phenomenally good race to go to, but its place on the Formula One calendar is quite precarious. It was almost axed this year. So if you're thinking about going, don't leave it too late. The 2023 race is going to take place at the end of July, rather than its more traditional slot of the end of August. This means that it's the last race before the summer break rather than the first race after it. This is a track that you're going to have to walk a lot. It's seven kilometers long. You're probably going to end up walking most of those before the race weekend is finished. Pack some very good walking shoes. There is a very good chance that it's going to rain. So pack a very good poncho and it's summer in Europe, so lots of suntan lotion. You'll be pleasantly surprised by the food that's on offer at the track. Really, this is the best spa weekend that you could possibly ever have.
Thank you for watching this A to Z guide to the Belgium Grand Prix. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Please do let me know in the comments below if you're planning to attend and do say hi. I'd love to meet you. Which track would you like me to cover next? If you'd like to buy any pictures of the Belgian Grand Prix, there's a link in the description below. There's also a discount code so you get 10% off any purchase. If you've enjoyed this, please do like and subscribe and until the next one, goodbye.